Welcome into the studio. Today, we're ranking 11 plus two bonus 3D printers that can crank out big prints like helmets. But here's a twist. With how rapidly everything's been changing in the world of 3D printing, from new filaments to new printers and even better software, would I still buy these Helmet Class 3D printers today? So besides ranking them, I'll be also giving them my buy or no buy recommendation. I've printed hundreds of helmets over the past couple years using everything from $300 machines to $5,000 plus dollar beasts. So stick around because I'm gonna break down each one of them and let you know which ones are still worth your time and money and I think you'll be surprised at which printer comes in number one. All right, now let's set some ground rules. First, this video is not sponsored. Second, the printers I'm covering must be helmet class 3D printers, meaning that they have a build volume of 300 millimeters cubed or larger. Third, they can have either an open or enclosed frame, and whether they're fast or slow isn't really a main concern. It's all about reliability and print quality. The fourth, and final rule, I'll only give a buy or no buy recommendation on printers that I've actually used. And trust me, that's quite a few because I think I've had over 60 different 3D printers arrive here in less than two years. All right, let's jump straight into it. And just like any other video, I'll have links on the screen and in the description for all the machines here. Starting out with number 11, the longer LK5 Pro with a build volume of 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters on the Z and a price I think listed on the website right now of $279. Now this machine uh, prints well, but you have to print slow. And so the reason it comes in at number 11 and unfortunately it is a no buy from me is because you're basically for $279, you're picking up a machine that's probably about four to five years old in technology. Like I said, nothing wrong with the machine. The machine prints great, but as you can see, um, it's just an older architecture. And I think for that price, um, you'll see below that you could probably pick up some better machines uh, for around that same dollar price point. Number 10, the AnyCubic Cobra Plus. Now that machine has a build volume of 300 by 300 by 350 millimeters on the Z, and it's currently listed at a similar price on the website of about $279 US. Now this machine, I think I ended up picking this one up myself, and uh, we printed some helmets with it. They turned out great. But I felt like AnyCubic's interface for the Cobra Plus was lacking, and I think its uh, build plate was a little bit soft. The springs that came uh, default on it were soft. Bed leveling knobs constantly needed adjusted. And like I said, that interface just wasn't up to what it should be uh, in today's world of 3D printing. So unfortunately, that is a no buy from me. Number nine. The Artillery Sidewinder X2. Now this is an interesting machine. Uh, we ended up having this machine like three years ago or so. It has a build volume of 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters on the Z. So it's a tall boy. And it comes in right now, I think listed on their website at a price of $199. Now it is a good machine as far as printing helmets, as long as you print slow. If you're printing anywhere from around 40 millimeters per second up to about 60, you can get away with some pretty great quality with that printer. But there are some drawbacks. The interface is a little bit rough. It's a little bit uh, barbaric, if you will. Um, you really can't do filament swaps or changes uh, without the printer just kind of freezing and locking up on you. They updated firmware to fix that. Then they kind of pulled that firmware back away. So it's just kind of a machine that I would say at this time in 3D printing, it would be a no buy from me only because I think at that price point of around $200 uh, you'll see here in a moment, 200 to $300 range, you can pick up some incredible machines. So unfortunately for the Artillery Sidewinder X2, I kind of feel like it had its time. Great machine, but today I don't think I would spend that money again. Number eight. Now we're into some interesting machines. This is the Sovel SV07 Plus, and this has a very similar build volume to the machines just ahead of it, and it is 300 by 300 by 350 millimeters on the Z, and it's currently listed on their website uh, at a price of about $299, and this begins where I would say yes to some of these printers. I would buy the Sobel SV07 Plus today. Sobel, uh, the interface is great. I think the build quality on the machines is really good. And uh, we've kind of had some great support with Sobel uh, whenever we've had questions or problems. And it did produce some great prints. So yeah, that would be a buy for me today. At $300 for a 300 by 300 by 350 millimeter printer, um, that's pretty good. Number seven, this is the Congro 
well, Sovel T500. Sovel merged with Comgro uh, this year, and so this machine is a monster, as the name implies. The T500 is 500 millimeters cubed. So that's 500 by 500 by 500 millimeters on the Z. It is insane, and it comes in at a price point listed on their website right now at $769. Now, hold on. I know that that sounds expensive, right? $770, but hear me out. The 500 millimeter build volume is massive. I don't know if you can understand uh, just how large that is, and maybe I'll get some B-roll of it while I'm talking here to show you just the difference between a 500 millimeter uh, build plate versus a like a 256 or a 300 millimeter uh, build plate. It is just enormous, and I really feel like that machine has some serious capability. We printed some fun things on it, and yeah, I think today, um, even even today, it's $769. I would pick up a Sovol T500. Amazing machine. Big. Giant. If you have the space for it, you have to have a big desk. Coming in at number six is the little brother to the T500, the Sovol T300. And that is a 300 by 300 by 350 millimeter beast of a machine. So fast, uh, pretty high tech, and uh, the interface is a, is a little bit different on it. Um, you, but but you'll find out that the machine heats up super quick. It's ready to print uh, nearly instantly, and it comes in at a price point that I think is very fair for that machine at three hundred and ninety nine dollars. And like the machine before it, I think uh, Sovol is doing a great job, and it is a buy from me at three hundred ninety nine. And matter of fact, um, you're going to see some helmets coming on that machine soon. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Obviously, you're into helmets. I mean, isn't that why you clicked on the thumbnail? So make sure you're subscribed because we're about to kick off another helmet printing phase here on the channel. Why? Because machines and materials have come a long way in just a couple of years. Everything's faster, it's cheaper, and it's producing better quality prints than ever before. It's the perfect time to see what these machines can do right now. Also, if I'm missing a Helmet Class 3 printer that you think I need to look at, one that needs ranked, let me know in the comments below which printer it is and uh, where you would place it in the ranking. All right, let's get back to the printers. Coming in at number five, this is the Artillery Sidewinder X4 Plus, and it has a build volume of 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters on the Z, and it comes in a price currently listed on the website at $349. Now, you'll have to pay attention because coming up, there's something that I need to mention about this printer, but you'll have to stick around because it'll be just a couple printers down the way. But this machine is a fantastic machine, a super solid platform uh, for printing helmets, and I think the price is really fair. And I think Artillery's done a really great job, uh, at least this past year, at getting these machines updated uh, for speed um, and, uh, and the quality's improved. So yes, that would be a machine today uh, that I'd pick up, I'd buy. Number four. This is the Elegoo Neptune 4 Plus, and it has a little bit of a different build volume. It's 320 by 320 by 385, and it's currently listed um, at $339 on the Elegoo website. Now, that build volume is a little bit odd. It's, like I said, 20 millimeters wider on the X and the Y, and it's a little bit taller at 385. Now, helmet class 3 printers, we talked about that, right? So they're 300 millimeters cubed or larger. But I promise you that having a machine that's just got that little extra on the X and Y and maybe some height on the Z makes it just so much easier to fit helmets on there and do those kind of fun customizations that you're gonna want. So yes, I would absolutely pick up this machine. That's a buy from me. And the next machine you're gonna find uh, awful interesting because coming in at number three, is the Elegoo Neptune 3 Max. That's right, it's the previous generation printer from Elegoo, but this is a killer machine. This has a build volume of 420 by 420 by 500 millimeters on the Z, and I have printed some massive helmets on this thing, and it has an incredible price of, get this, $349 as of today on the Elegoo website. So get that a 420 by 420 by 500 millimeter uh, on the Z 3D printer for $350. Incredible value, and that's why that machine comes in number three. Um, it's an in insane value for a 3D printer, and yes, absolute buy from me. If you know me, then you're not gonna be shocked that printer number two is the Raze 3D Pro 2, and it comes in with a build volume of exactly 300 millimeters cubed, and it's priced 
Currently in the United States, at around anywhere from $2,000 to $3,000 right now because that printer is an older machine. It's probably about four years old uh, at this point, but it is a rock solid platform. It's an industrial machine. And I, when I bought mine myself, I think I paid anywhere from like between four to 6,000. I don't know, it was a long time ago, warranties and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, um, if you can find a Pro 2 or even a Pro 2 Plus and get a good price on it, that machine will crank out some of the best helmets uh, that have ever existed. Um, it is an incredible machine, super stable platform. Ray's 3D is great uh, with their firmware updates. Matter of fact, the Pro 2 series has the Hyper FFF upgrade uh, available for it, um, as well as uh, their the creators of Idea Maker which is one of the most advanced slicers that we have out there. So this absolutely is a buy from me, and I'm kind of proud that it came in at number two uh, as far as the, the printer that can just produce such great results in this ranking. So yeah, definite buy from me. Matter of fact, if you can find a good deal on a Pro 2, tell me in the comments below. I know they're expensive. All right, before we get to the number one helmet class 3D printer in the lineup, I have two bonus 3D printers that I couldn't rank because I haven't used them. And remember, that was one of my rules. And the first one is the Artillery Sidewinder X4 Plus S1. It's the same machine that we just talked about with Artillery, right? But this is a new machine that's been updated, and it's a little bit more expensive at $369. But this machine, I have an idea that it's going to be great because of the upgrades uh, that uh, Artillery has done with it. They removed the bed leveling knobs, and they did some other fancy things with it. And stick around, make sure you're subscribed, because we will have content coming on that soon. The next machine, right, that I can't rank is the FL Sun S1. Now the machine behind me, this is the FL Sun T1, and the S1 is its larger brother, and it has a build volume of 320 millimeters in diameter with a Z of around 430 millimeters. It is a huge machine, and it comes in at a price point of $1,499. Now that's big enough to print a helmet on, but I haven't printed a helmet on it yet, so I can't really include it in the ranking, but I will tell you that that machine should be here within about the next, like, I don't know, 10 days or so, and uh, I've been told by FL Sun that they took all of the issues uh, kind of that were reported to them when it was first released into account. They've addressed those and the machine I'm receiving is going to be all updated and ready to rock. So I'm excited. So that'll be interesting. So like I said, subscribe to see that one. Here it is, the printer that you've been waiting for, number one, the Sovol SV08. This is an incredible machine. It has a build volume of 350 by 350 by 345 millimeters on the Z, and it currently has a price on the US website listed at $579. This is one monster of a helmet 3D printer, and it is one of my new favorites. Uh, the firmware has been updated within like, I think about the last month or so, and this machine is rock solid, and it is producing incredible prints. And so I would say that if you have an opportunity or a chance to pick this machine up, I would do so in a heartbeat. Also, keep in mind that Sobel has an enclosure kit for it, and there's other upgrades for it. So, um, yeah, this machine can print helmets like you can't believe. And you are going to see some of that over the next couple of months here on the LM Show's YouTube channel. So, like I said, hit that subscribe button. I know I keep saying it, but I'm telling you, we are entering a helmet phase. It's going to be incredible. You are going to see some of the coolest stuff from some of the coolest 3D printers released on this channel. And thank you for sticking with me to the end. I hope this breakdown helped you decide if these helmet-capable 3D printers are still worth it in uh, today's rapidly changing market. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And let me give a huge thank you to all of our YouTube members and our Patreon supporters. You truly make this possible, and I couldn't do it without you. Thank you, and I will see you in the next one. Happy printing. Oh, and uh, don't let me forget, uh, YouTube thinks uh, you're going to like this next video of mine, so you should watch it. Seriously, click it. Go watch it.